I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good. Welcome back to Water Park Rangers, let's play Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. In the last episode, we entered the Carpe Retractum Challenge, but Harry got separated from our group, and in this episode, Ron and Hermione have to find a way to reunite with him. The card we just picked up was the second out of five wizard cards in the wizard card set. It is Merlin. Yeah, you actually get Merlin this late in the game. I'm pretty sure Merlin was, like, perhaps the first card you can get in Chamber of Secrets. Now, this part's kind of irritating, because unfortunately, as much as I hate getting hit by the red caps, stink bombs, there seems to be no way to get through this part without them hitting you continuously. So they just do it over and over while you just try and fix the bridges, Hermione. And it gets over pretty quickly. So I like this idea of fixing the bridges and stuff, and I think that's pretty cool, but I really could do without the constant stink gas, and that's like the fifth one in a row. I'm going to switch back to Ron here at this point, because... A red cap just appeared behind Hermione. And besides, this bridge makes um, Ron and Hermione, when they're not controlled by your AI, act really weirdly. Like, they don't run to you when they should. I'm pretty sure the case in point is going to present itself pretty soon. And also, yeah, this little random jar for the first time gives us a Wigan World Potion. When I played through this and I was testing it out, um, almost every one of these things gave a Wigan World Potion, but I've been rather lucky in just getting beans. Also, check out this red cap just running in place. This has definitely been the glitchiest game that I've LP'd, and perhaps may ever LP. I don't count Freak Down or Pirates of the Caribbean, because those are Let's Not Plays, and those games are quite honestly just one giant glitch. <laughs> or at least, um, that's my excuse that I make for them, as I don't want to think that someone willingly constructed that and thought it was good. See what I mean? Ron was like running in the complete opposite direction. The bridge just makes him behave weirdly, and it bothers me. Anyhow, the uh, hallway up ahead is actually going to be completely devoid of enemies because we cleared out all the red caps and ran out of it earlier. So no, there's actually nothing hidden in it. There's nothing that we missed. We have yet another annoying room coming up here. At least the first half of it is annoying because we have to contend with... Hinky Punks. They're in the way of us solving this puzzle. I'm not entirely sure whether you need to kill them or not, but I think it'll just make your life easier if you get rid of them. That's totally up for debate, because I, I could see how, like, you could just stink, you could just sneak past the hinky punks and not deal with them at all, and maybe finish this room easier and more quickly, but I was always under the, impression, un, under the impression that you had to kill every enemy that you met in a room in a challenge chamber in order to move on. I mean, obviously that's not true in Chamber of Secrets, considering that ghosts are invincible, and you couldn't really kill fire crabs until you learned Incendio. That's a problem with Hinky Punks, is you can't really get the Lumos on them when they're running. You have to make it so that they run, ag run up against a wall or get stuck in a dead end or something. By the way, if your partner gets like too low on HP during this point at any point, just go over and heal them with a Wigan Weld Potion. No point in having to let them die. Just use the Wigan Weld Potion, that's what it's made for. Alright, he's solid, and we defeated him with our Dark Forces Flipendo. Makes it so much simpler. Aha! I think I was able to get Hermione to avoid that. Oh, or at least... I, I was under the impression that Hermione avoided, avoided that, but now I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure. Looks like this Hinky Punk's in a pretty good position for us to hit him with Lumos. So we're actually going to defeat these enemies quicker than I normally do. Yep, we got him. Okay, thank god they're gone. And now we can move on to the puzzle proper. This one is... Actually kind of complicated, because I'm not sure if I ever solved it legitimately when I played it. Um, it could be that the way that I found to solve it is the way you're actually supposed to do it. First things first, you've got to get Ron to use Lumos Duo. Well, I mean, first things first, I wanted to heal Hermione, because she lost some HP, and we're going to be fighting plenty more enemies. Don't want any deaths if I can avoid them. Besides, Hermione has already died too many times, I feel bad for her. So... What am I supposed to do? Oh yeah, we gotta freeze the fountains in order to get Ron to climb up on them. But besides that, Ron is gonna have to use Lumos Duo in order to start off a charge up that light orb over there. I guess I kind of had like a brief brain fart when I was recording this because I totally forgot what I was supposed to do as I was commentating on it. This is just, I guess, a more complex puzzle than I remember it being. And like I said, I never found the legit solution. If there's a legit one, please let me know. Or if I did find the legit one, and this is it, and this is the same way you solved the puzzle, let me know that also. I know this is like asking a lot, because a, a lot of the people who seem to enjoy this LP played the game a while ago, just like I did when I was young, 
and might not remember it as well, and they're watching us to jog their memories. But the way that I ended up solving this, I'm pretty sure it's not the way you're supposed to do it. Also, I was trying to charge up the light orb from the ground, because I was able to do that um, without having to have Ron climb up the thing that Hermione froze here when I was doing my test run of the game, but I ended up not being able to do that this time for whatever reason. Just Ron's Lumos Duo Beam did not luckily focus on the orb like it did when I was doing the test run. And now the orb's all charged up, shining its light over to that mirror, so it's pretty clear what we gotta do. Hop down. I always try and get them to jump off the ledges, but I'm only, like, successful about one-third of the time, unfortunately. And I really am a fan of that whole thing about how Hermione freezes fountains and you can climb on them. I think that's a really cool idea. So, let's grab this mirror and tilt it over in the direction that we want. There we go. And once it shines on that statue, just like in the last room with the Doxy boxes, this one's going to unleash water onto the floor that Hermione can make into an ice cube. And we're actually going to be able to freeze it around that crystal ball right there. There we go. So there's an eye that we're supposed to use, um... There's an eye that we're supposed to get the light into. And you're supposed to get it in there by, like, sliding the the ice cube so that it lands perfectly. It's the ray is just focusing into the eye. Like, if you happen to just slide it right past, um past the eye. It's not enough that the light touches the eye. It has to be held into the beam. And the only way I found that you can do this is to have Ron stand right here. Or like stand right next to the eye. So that when you push the ice block, the ice block actually stops because it hits Ron. And that's the only way I've found to solve this puzzle is you have to get Ron to stand in the way and get hit by it. And I mean if you really want it, of course Hermione can stand in the way and Ron can push the block. The bottom line is someone has to stand in the way and get hit by the ice block in order to open that um gateway by getting the light into the eye, and I never found out whether or not that was a legit way to solve the puzzle, or just some bootleg solution that I came up with because I couldn't think of anything else. It's really quite an amusing solution to the puzzle, too. And now, unfortunately, we have more hinky punks to contend with, and because I'm not sure whether or not we need to defeat them to get house points, I'm going to do it anyway. Because I'm pretty sure these are actually the last hinky punks in the game. I hope I'm right about that. Because if, if I am, then I'm really glad we never have to deal with them again. There you are, last Hinky Punk. You will not hit us with fire anymore. Yes, we're done with you forever. Probably. And this leads us back to the main room. Each time you ascend a little higher in the main room around that central spiral pillar. It's really kind of a neat dungeon design idea. Now this card here is Glanmore Peaks, the third of the five in the wizard card set. He is actually the same guy that you can talk to on the portrait right outside Fred and George's shop. Like in that hallway with the biting books and the Reparo vase. He's Glenmore Peaks, and now we have his card. Also, Harry's been freed. That switch does two things. It frees Harry, and it also fixes up this bridge conveniently enough. I guess they couldn't be bothered to just make another flipendo mechanism that would build the bridges like the last one did. Because that would make too much sense and would be too consistent for the dungeon. Those flipendo mechanisms look like they could feasibly be related to turning the, um, the floor, but no, that's... Apparently, they're just another random thing that works the same as a wall switch in this case. Now over here, um, you're going to find that if you go across the center of this room, there is actually no way to outright progress. But I'm going to do it anyway so that you can see what's blocking your path. It's a new obstacle that we haven't encountered before. Or rather, a new puzzle element design. Something to that effect. A game developer, I'm sure, could tell you the real, the real term for this. It's an odd bridge with two hooks between them that you... It's far too, like, far too wide for Harry to just jump across. And, of course, Ron and Hermione can't even jump, so there's no way anyone's getting across that. What you have to do is have Harry jump down to this, as odd as it may seem. Um, there's a lot of weird things about this dungeon that are just not easy to figure out the first time you're looking at them. Um, the reason I'm clearing this so qu quickly in the LP is because I already know where everything is, and I took precise notes on all the puzzles on how to solve them. That way I could do the recording pretty quickly and get them done without running into any difficulties. Or at least minimize the number of difficulties I run into. So this flipendo mechanism is going to raise up the ground that Harry just walked across that he jumped to. And that will make it so that he can reach the next door. Be very careful on your way down here. You don't want to have Harry just jump because then he'll fall into the abyss far below. Um, I'm not sure whether or not that stuff's supposed to be like swamp water or anything. If anything, it just acts more like mist. I've had this game glitch out on me where I had Harry fall down there, and instead of just, like, falling and then respawning because he died, he just kept falling 
and that went on and on. I've had that glitch happen in the Avathor's Challenge Chamber when I was doing some platforming as well um, in Chamber of Secrets. Like, that's just a glitch in the Harry Potter series where you just start falling and you, you don't really ever stop. Now, for a while, Harry's been the one with the least amount of spells on the full party, but now he's at least going to tie with Ron because he gets the spell that I rather like, Carpe Retractum. This essentially serves as a hook shot for Harry, or a grappling hook. A pretty common item in gaming in general, but definitely smacks of Zelda all around. Honestly, I'm a little surprised that in the Potter series it took them three games to finally make a hookshot spell. So, Carpe Retractum. This room is kind of confusing, and it can take a while unless you know what order to do it in. You can't fight the Redcaps on the far side for now. You want to fight the Redcaps over here on this side. These are Redcaps that aren't holding shields, and you can just defeat them with Flipendo. If you try and fight the other Redcaps across the gap from here, even using Carpe Retractum on them to try and pull their shield away just won't work, and you'll be... It'll be completely fruitless, so just kill those two red caps, and then you can grab onto this thing, which is honestly really cool, and then pull yourself across with a carpet retractum. Now here's that weird bridge thing that we saw earlier, only it's a lot smaller, so just pull it, and it folds out into a bridge. I really like that design, it's really cool. Kudos to whoever invented that, that is a cool bridge for your game design. Now these red caps, or I call them red craps, these red caps holding shields, just target them, and then... Pull their shields off with Carpet Retractum, and Flipendo them. So, from now on, anytime you find a red cap that's holding a shield, know that Harry can use Carpet Retractum to pull off the shield. Doesn't always work, though, so also keep that in mind. Carpet Retractum on shields is not always the most effective way to fight those red caps. Sometimes it's better to just have your party members distract them while you sneak up from behind and defeat them. Though, more often what happens is you try and fight them, and your party members sneak up from behind and defeat them, which honestly is quite alright in the end, because it just serves the same purpose, which is you winning against the shield red cap which is really what you want all along. Now we've got kind of another cool part. We're on the opposite side of that bridge we saw from earlier. It's a lot longer than the one we previously saw, so what you gotta do is pull it once with Carpet Retractum. It's gonna fold out as far as it can. You can't pull it any farther. Now have Harry jump across, because it's close enough to get, get it right where you need it to go, and then pull the other half of the bridge towards you. If you try to keep pulling the same side of the bridge, it just won't work. You actually have to jump across to make it work, and it makes a lot of sense. And I think it's really cool, so I have no complaints about that. In addition, Carpet Retractum can pull off things that really make sense, like random grates in the wall, like that one down there. This is like a one-time thing, just pull out that little grate and you never, see, you never see that done again. And I actually really like that, it just makes it feel a lot more natural, it's not like just a random puzzle element. It was an actual grate that Harry pulled off. It's the little things that matter. So Hermione sneaks behind there, hits the switch, lets the whole party through. And the three of you together are going to be able to overcome the challenges that face you up ahead. The challenges are an army of redcaps and then the boss. We're actually going to save the boss for next episode, due to the way I've decided to split these up. Hey, Hermione, over here. I don't know. I'm guessing we're going to have around 20 episodes when this LP is complete. Probably less than Chamber of Secrets, but a lot of the episodes have been longer than my Chamber of Secrets episodes, so... No big deal. So we have a real army of redcaps here, there's at least nine of them. I'm not sure really what the deal with these wooden shields is. I think that you can break them with Flipendo, but maybe you can also pull them with Carpet Retractum. Some of these redcaps do have shields, others I'm not sure whether they have them or not. I just try to get on the side of redcaps that aren't shielded and bring them down with Flipendo. It's really quite chaotic, and I have no advice for you except try and back up a little bit, that way if a redcap runs to you, it won't be able to hit you with this club quite as easily. See, I wasn't sure whether or not I was able to de-shield that red cap, even though I was pulling on him with Carpet Retractum, but it didn't matter because my party members finished him off. Now, the door up ahead, that's where we're going to find the boss. And before we go in, I actually I do recommend that you heal up everyone with Wigan Wood Potion, because there's no point in dying on this boss, and you just want to make sure that everyone's in ship shape. You can't always rely on their AI to dodge attacks, that's definitely true during bosses, and since bosses tend to do more damage, generally speaking, Expect your party members to get hit more. Ron was the one with most of the Wigan Wells, and I've been wanting to save uh, Wigan Weld for Harry. I wonder if I ever call these potions Polyjuice Potions by mistake. I probably do. Maybe I even did it recently without realizing it. Anyway, for now, this is Mischief Managed.